Hi there, my name is Julian Ginori and I'm a PhD student studying plant breeding and genetics here at the University of Florida. I'm here to talk to you today about what it's like being a graduate student studying plant breeding and how my research specifically relates to the utilization and preservation of germplasm. One of the first things you learn in grad school is the necessity to maintain a germplasm collection. These collections act as a source for studies on various aspects of plant development such as speciation, evolution, and morphological or physiological trait assessments. From a breeder point of view, the germplasm collection that you curate and care for is the source of all the genetic variation that you may need to develop a product which may eventually make it to market. I consider myself lucky because I was able to join a lab in the beginning stages of a begonia breeding program. The genus begonia has over 1900 identified species with more being discovered every month. Couple that with an even larger number of hybrids and this truly is a mega diverse genus. When I first started my PhD program here at the Mid Florida Research and Education Center we had maybe 20 species and varieties. I opened the door to this greenhouse for the first time and was greeted by empty benches and endless opportunity. As you can imagine, for a beginning graduate student, this was a little intimidating. Over time, our germplasm collection has grown to over 200 unique species and varieties thanks to donations from begonia enthusiasts, growers, and collectors across the country. All of the plants in our collection are now being used to enhance our understanding of breeding with and between species, as well as identify traits associated with heat stress tolerance, which is a central theme of my PhD research. That leads me to the second most important thing you learn in grad school, and that is identifying your breeding objectives. Unlike edible crops, we don't have to worry about things such as flavor, fruit size, or shelf longevity. In the case of breeding ornamentals, some might consider us superficial because looks mean everything. Plant architecture, flower count and duration, flower color, leaf color are just some of the factors we keep in mind when deciding what plants to cross with which progeny to select when the time comes. I spend at least an hour every day in the greenhouse or out in our full sun plots observing my plants. Looking at Excel sheets filled with data is great and all, but I believe to be a true plant breeder, you need to become one with your germplasm collection. It's out here in the field where we can observe the small day-to-day -day differences between how our plants respond to stress. And it's these small differences that could be the difference between your selections making it to market or flopping. One thing that I'm sure many of you know about Florida is that it is hot and it is humid. Not only does this create a perfect environment for pests and diseases, it causes morphological and physiological changes in plants. As mentioned before, my PhD research focuses on heat stress tolerance. So we added that to the list of traits to look for in our breeding program. Though that one's a little harder to see with the naked eye. That brings me to the bulk of what I spend my time on, elucidating the response of various begonia species and varieties to high heat stress. In the field, I use a LiCor 6800 portable photosynthesis system to tune into various aspects of plant physiology such as carbon assimilation, stomatal conductance, and transpiration, and how these parameters change when plants are exposed to high temperature and high light stress, both big factors that need to be considered when growing anything in Florida. When it comes to the plant's response to stress, I also measure factors such as ion leakage and ROS accumulation, specifically hydrogen peroxide and superoxide anions, which can damage lipids, proteins, and even DNA found in cells, which may eventually lead to the cell death. Another physiological response to high temperature or high light is the production of anthocyanins. This plant on my right is a variety that we have that's been growing out in the full sun for the last couple weeks. On my left, we have the exact same variety that's been growing in the shaded greenhouse for the same amount of time. Isn't that amazing? Using a combined anthocyanin and chlorophyll extraction protocol, I can quantify the anthocyanin and chlorophyll in begonia leaves and see how it relates to the other parameters I mentioned before. All of this may sound like a lot of time spent in the field collecting data, and an equal amount of time at my desk sifting through it all, trying to find connections, but I think that's one of the highlights of being a graduate student in plant breeding and genetics. Every day, I'm doing something different. Every day, I'm discovering a cool new trait that I didn't notice before, or learning a new protocol that'll help me get a better understanding of begonia. One of the questions we graduate students always get is, is it all worth it? 
And here at the University of Florida and our Begonia breeding program, I can definitely say yes.